It feels awesome to be here at this time. Ni baraka zake bwana ambazo zimetubeba. Ah uh, and uh, you also look good. And uh, we know our times. So we'll move a little bit quickly, but before that I welcome us all to the moment of receiving the word of God with appreciation to the to our leader and our father, our reverend and the pastoral team for the opportunity to share the word of God this afternoon. And I feel blessed and humbled in the presence of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Uh, receive greetings too from my family who are not with us today for some reasons but uh, they sent me with their blessings today uh, we have been having a week of uh, a blessing from the Lord as we have been sharing about total deliverance to full dominion leaving nothing behind and uh, I'm not worried because of the time because uh, we have been fed throughout the week and the food is still there in the fridge. If you didn't eat during the week, you can go open the fridge uh, online. You can get that food there. It's still fresh. You can feed on it because it was awesome. It was rich. And uh, God has been ministering to us all the way from Monday throughout the week in uh, our fellowships. I know the message has been the same. And I would say that I, I would confess I have labored for this message because every time I prepared a message, the speaker of that day spoke that exactly message. Nikuwa naanda naomba naanda message ujube vizuri nasikia mwenye anakuja jioni anatoa the same same message that I had. Then I, I went back to the Lord and I was searching again. Waka ya that day asamu ili niudhi. Habu, ila tu vasi ni liadika pare juu ya kwanza. I told my wife, hata leo ameaza na hiyo. And uh, I thank God because it shows that uh, we are one in spirit. Wana asifiwe. Ya kuamba mungu amekua kinena nasi kwa jia ambayo ni usawa wa, wa roho. Na nashukuru mungu kwa hayo. Hata hivyo, mungu hana upungufu wa chakura cha watu wake. There is no deficiency. Bona asifiwe. When we seek him further, we learn what he wants us to hear and the message he wants us to deliver. And I, I thank God for the message that has been coming and uh, the word that we have been having. When uh, Moses refused on behalf of the Israelites to compromise anything, to lower the standards according to the requirements of God. He stood firm and said, we are not lowering the standards to suit you, our enemy Pharaoh. For the message and the, uh, of God was very clear. The instruction came with clarity. Let my people go so that they may worship me. And Moses had the message with clarity. So he did not allow the enemy whatsoever to change the instruction. Wana sifiwe. Na tulierezewa hayo vizuri sana siku ya jumatano. Ya kwamba Musa akasimama. Na akasema ya kwamba we are not leaving anyone behind. Praise be to God. We are not leaving anyone behind. And we come to a point that he says in Exodus 10.26. That was our main verse. That we shall, he was told by Pharaoh. Anyway, I now give up. You people can go. But leave your flocks behind. At least the enemy wanted to remain with something. Kuna kitu walitaka kujishikiria. Ili ya kwamba hawa watu wakienda, mawazo yao itakuwa nyubani. Itakuwa Egypt. Itakuwa katika utumwa. Lakini, when he said that leave behind the flocks. Moses lifted the bar higher. Kamuambia sasa tusiogerea mifugo. Hata ukwato hatuwachi. 
We are not going to leave even a hoof behind. You know, Moses looked for the most insignificant part of an animal. Akamuambia sasa tusishide haba tukibishana. We are not leaving a hoof behind. And that takes me to my verse, the one I gave you the other day. And I told you that in Ruth 118, the Bible says that when Naomi realized that Ruth was determined, she stopped urging her. Pharaoh told Moses, can you leave? And I, you should never see my face again. And Moses says, truly as you said it, I'll never see you again. And as it is recorded, they never met again. Praise be to God. When he said that, I will not leave a hoof behind, that was the last time they ever spoke with Pharaoh face to face. And we can see them delivered, and they leave Egypt. I don't want to go into that detail, because that was uh, brought to us very clearly throughout the week. But uh, there's a verse I want us to look at in Exodus 19, 4 to 5. And from onset of things, let me put the record very straight. Because our message was very clear that it is total deliverance to full dominion. So I want to put the record straight by stating this point that, and this one we agree, because we have been agreeing all through the year, that we were created and called to dominate. Buenas if you the reason and the purpose of our creation and the reason and purpose of your calling is so that you may dominate. At, at least up to that point we need to agree. That we were born, we were created, and we were called to dominate. Praise be to God. And let me also put this as a fact that partial domination is equivalent to non-domination. If you are dominating partially, then you are as good as no domination at all. There is no pride in partial domination. You know, I worked in a country called Somalia, and Somalia is a funny country, because in Somalia, the president is only the president of the capital city. <laughs> he is only a president of Mogadishu. If you have been to Somalia, Cyrus and uh, Nod, because he knows... That president has no control of his country except the capital city. In fact, he cannot go to the villages, has he? Because he risks being killed by the Al Shababs. So, yeah, yeah, Anakuaga too dominant in the capital city. In fact, it is in, in Somalia, Juzi Unaskia, there is a part of the country that they were doing elections. See, Somalia, Duarichagua president. Wanafanya tu erection, an inti yako. And you have no control over what they do there. They have their own government revenue. Maboyao hawa husishi yata hawa watu wa Mogadishu, they don't. Now you can imagine what kind of domination is that. That is what we are calling partial domination. And that is why the message is talking about total deliverance to full dominion leaving nothing behind. Praise be to God. And I also us to look at uh, Exodus 19.4. And uh, this is after a long story behind there. And it says, you yourself have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Verse 5. Now, if you obey me fully, and keep my covenant, then out of all nations, you will be my treasured possessions. I love this part. He says, although the whole earth is mine. You know, the reason he may put this here, the reason God brought this message here, he says that I have anointed you, or rather, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations, you will be my treasured possession. But remember, <laughs> the whole earth is mine. In other words, God is saying, I am not choosing you because I have deficiency of tools. I'm not choosing you because I have deficiency of nations. 
I'm not choosing you kwa sababu nina upungufu wa watu wa kutumia. But rather remember that it is favor and grace that God gives you that he calls you a child. Bwana asifiwe. He states categorically that the whole earth is my next. You will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. And this is domination. That God is calling these people to have dominion because he is saying that if you obey me and keep my covenant, you will be to me a holy nation a nation of priests, praise be to God, and a kingdom of priests. So, the condition for full dominion is that they will obey God to the letter. And that is it. That is what God expected of them. When he was delivering them, he was only changing their status from slaves to servants. That he wanted you as slaves. Whatever you do, you are enslaved. But I want to set you free. And Paul puts it better. That he says, we are now to be totally slaves of righteousness. Praise be to God. Not slaves of Pharaoh, but slaves of righteousness. But now being staged in Psalms 95. Very quick media, if you can help me. In Psalms 95 verse 6. God says, or rather, the psalmist says, Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pastor. The flock under his care. Today, if only you would hear his voice. Do not harden your hearts as, did, as you did at Meribah, as you also did at Massa in the wilderness. Verse 9. Where your ancestors tested me, they tried me, though they had seen what I did. Uh -huh. For 40 years, I was angry with that generation. I said, there are people whose hearts go astray, and they have not known my ways. This is God. Another version says, for 40 years, I was grieved. Because God did so much. I think that one we were taken through by Pastor Gure on Wednesday. The much haste and depth that the Lord went to save the children of Israel. He went through the ten plagues. And now he says, after I did this, then these children forgot about it. And they did not keep my covenant with them. For 40 years, I was grieved. For 40 years, I was angry with that generation. Praise be to God. Bwana asifiwe. Unawahurumia hao watu. Ya kwamba bwana aliwaokoa kwa nguvu mingi. Kwa, <laughs> with a lot of effort, he saved them. But they forgot about that and they did not keep the covenant. And God says, for 40 years, I was grieved with them. We pity that generation. Praise be to God. Bwana asifiwe. Wagapi wana wahurumia? You don't. But I dare say that many a times we find ourselves in the same, same situation. And that is why the word of God says that do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Bwana asifiwe. Ephesians chapter 4, it says that do not grieve the Holy Spirit. In, a, in fact, it also says, do not give the devil a foothold. But many a times we have given the devil. And I want to speak about some areas very fast that God has spoken to me with a lot of clarity that he really desires we get delivered from those situations for us to attain full dominion by the word of God and the Holy Spirit of God. One as if you an area number one, this one I think also was really mentioned, but I will emphasize on it. Number one is a retrogressive and a stagnant mindset. A retrogressive stroke, stagnant mindset. The Lord so desires 
that we get delivered from a retrogressive and a, a stagnant mindset. And we'll move a little bit quickly. Number, under that retrogressive mindset and a doubtful mindset, number one is doubtful thoughts. That God will deliver us from doubtful thoughts. Thoughts that are always full of doubts. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 30. What does the word of God say? Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 30. The Lord your God who is going before you will fight for you as he did for you in Egypt before your very eyes. Verse 31. And in the wilderness, there you saw how the Lord your God carried you as a father carries his son all the way you went until you did this place. 32. In spite of this, you did not trust in the Lord, your God. Who went ahead of you on your journey, in fire by night and in a crowd by day, to search out places for you to come and to show you the way you should go? Mungu You know, God says that in spite of me doing all this, in spite of me being with you by day and by night, you still did not trust you. Trust me. How many times in our lives have we had an amnesia that we so easily forget what God did for us yesterday, what God did for us this morning, and when you are faced by a mountain, the first thing that comes to your mind is how am I going to make it? We have an amnesia of forgetting what the Lord did for us. For now it sounds like this was a crazy thing for the Israelites. But if I do my own examination, how many times have I been a victim of a doubtful thought when it comes to the Lord? How many times have I failed to trust him because he is God? Praise be to God. That is God is calling us. If we want to dominate, we remember who is God. We remember his deeds now and before. And by that alone, we get to believe in him. Number two, I'll move first. Sorry, under retrogressive minds, that we need to be delivered from self absorbing thoughts. I'm a self absorbed thought. Thoughts is a way we're Unajueka, a victim in everything. And this one affects the congregation. What I mean, I'll give an example. Whenever you see two people standing together, that self-absorbed thought always prevents us from showing our potentials, living to our potential. We always feel as if we are victim of circumstances. Praise be to God. Always you feel that you have inadequacies. You are not complete. You have issues. When I say if you are a kissing to a shika microphone, una sema, musisikize sauti yangu, na jua haikuagi muzuri, lakini manena ya tawabariki. Already you are falling a victim of who you are, you feel you are in the ministry. You have your self-absorbed thoughts. And you can look at Romans 8.5. Then the other one is guilty thoughts. The thoughts of guilt. The Lord to deliver us from thoughts of guilt. You have self-guilt in yourself. Either for something you did. Something you thought. It might be in the past. But you carry it along for so long. That every time you appear before God, you start judging yourself. You have self-guilt, guilty thoughts. First John 3, 19. May the Lord deliver us from self-guilt, thoughts that are guilty. You always feel that you are guilty. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. Number 20. In our, if our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. That 21. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, 
we have confidence before God. If you have no self-condemnation thoughts, then you will have confidence before God. But if you always have guilt within yourself, you always approach God when you say the first few words, God, I come before you. Then you remember, ah, but I am a sinner. Yes, you are. But if you want to have confidence before your God, avoid self-condemnation thoughts, the self-guilty thoughts. And number three, uh, or the other one, regretful thoughts. Thoughts of regret. This one will never dominate if we move with regrets. And I don't necessarily mean even in the house of God, including in our family. You will never dominate in your family. You have never accepted. Praise be to God. Whoever married you, you have never accepted. You have never accepted it and moved on. You live in regret until you will never dominate in your area. Praise be to God. Kama wewe ni mwanarika na unaishi kusema I wish ningechagua nige udaktari. I wish I did uh, civil engineering. Naona masi alitoa <laughs> shukurani. Unahesabu miezi mbili tu after graduation. Unaanza kusema afadhali ningefanya civil engineering. You live in regrets. You will never dominate in your area. So you need to overcome. And that is what happened in Exodus 14, 12. These people will never dominate with this kind of mindset in Exodus 14, verse 12. Give us that. It says, didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Musa, situlikuwa bia uachane na sisi. Unaenda kidogo maji imekosa. Anajuzu wa mekura. They, they forget. How will you dominate with that kind of mindset? The Lord is calling us to total deliverance in our mind. Romans 12, it says, have your mind renewed. Do not conform to the patterns of the world, but have your mind renewed. Start thinking a new way. Start seeing God in your life. That is the first deliverance that God has shown me that we need to accompany it in our deliverance. The deliverance of the mindset. Retrogressive mindset. Stagnant mindset. Number two. Another deliverance that we need is parasitic sins. Parasitic sins. Number one, we have talked about retrogressive mindset. Number two, parasitic sins. Hebrews chapter number 12, verse 1. The Bible says this. There are those sins, ambazos in kukwamiria kama kupe. Wanasifiwe. Praise be to God. Nakira wakati... Reverend Akisema inua mkono kama kuna dhabi ungetaku and unakuja kwa madhabau. Lakini hujui inarudigi aje Tuesday. Waiting for the next deliverance. Hujuezi erezea. Lakini ine kukwamiria kama kupe. Wanasifiwe. And as he says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out, out for us. There is a sin that so easily entangles. It is so easily entangles. Wana sifiwe. It is para, unajua parasite. Parasite is again hata tukonazo. Sio sisi kutaka. Urihamia tu nyuba, ukapata ikona cockroach. Si hata we umefuga. We ni nyuba uriigia, ukapata ikona cockroach. Wengine hata ni mtu alikuja kwako na ametoka jaikuat. Amebeba nini? Kuguni. <laughs> Akaziacha uko. It, it was not your effort. It was not you sinning. 
but the sin so easily entangles. Hata pengine ulitoa kwa basi. But the Bible says that we throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles. And how do you do this? Number one, how do you, how do you get rid of this sin? How do you get delivered? Because you need some action point. There are sins that so easily ata zimeja hapa, igine umefanya asubui. Na unasikia kabisa kama paulo, unasema ni na muimba ambao ni getamani sana kutoa. But unanitunga sana. Every time I want to get rid of it, napata bado unanifuata. Number one, acknowledge the sin. Acknowledge. Say my, acknowledge it even before God. Tell him, God, I know this troubles me. Misi jui vire. Ako ka icon, ka pornography na finyaka. Si jui, lakini uwa na ka finyaka. Every time kuna wifi. Na dipataga uko. Praise be to God. Acknowledge there is the sin. Acknowledge first. Number two, and this is biblical, confess it to God and to one another. Confess it. Find a brother. Find a brother. Find a sister. And confess. Kwa kiswahiri wanasema, Pastor Gure, ungameni dha bizenu. Muka ungama dha bizenu. There was this one brother. Sita sema jina samu utamujua. <laughs> but we used to preach with him he was preaching fire na tumetoka mission kaniambia devi tulifika na kuru akaniita devi kuja hebu tuingie hapa kanibaia chai tulikuwa tumetoka a very fiery mission kaniambia devi and that guy taught me something kaniambia devi there's something i want to share with you promise me promise me you'll keep it between us unasema na ninawaambia yeah that's why you don't know the person so it's still a secret because you don't know him and and he told me kuna hii shida imekuwa ikinisubua kuna dhabi moja nilifanya and you know i found it crazy this guy is giving me a story to mejuana juzi three years ago we are in university fourth year and he's telling me, Kasi narifanya akiwa kijana wa kira seven. Kashidu, are you crazy? Why are you even concerned about it? Akaanza kuniambia, oh, nikiwa kira seven, kuna hii dhabi nilifanya, amba ilikuwa baya sana na meishi kwa moe wangu. Nataka leo initoke. Because I want to, to plan for a wedding soon. Nataka initoke. Nime kuita. I share it to you. And it was later that I read the Bible and I realized it is also a way of overcoming that sin. Praise be to God. It was the first way of telling the devil, you know what? I realize I have this problem. But I'm looking forward to total deliverance. And truly, he gave me a testimony. He overcame the self-guilt. He overcame it because it was deep within him. So confess it to one another. Number, the next one, repent it. Repent before the Lord. Repent. You confess it. I know confessing ni kusema nirifanya mungu na niko berezako ni kikwambia nirifanya. Lakini nina, I am repenting of this sin. Then after you repent, Ask for help. Ask for help. You might ask it from a colleague, but if it's so hard, ask it from the helper. We were all given the Holy Spirit. Ask for help. And then focus on the reward. Focus on the reward. Focus on Jesus. Focus on him. I know the sin and tagos. Ina kuzuia kudominate. You cannot... You know, hakuna kitu gumu. Kama uitu wa mahali, Dr. Kevin, ukaogerere kitu na ukona thabia hiyo kitu. Sa hizi uabue, ukaogerere doa na kuwako kumearibika. Hafu watu wanasema, 
tutakuwa tuta na maneno kadhaa kutoka kwa kwa mzee fulani <laughs> akuoga kunatomeka that is why i'm saying there are some little things that prevent us from dominating sababu uwezi dominate your area unasi unashidu hasa nitawabia nini hadi unaona paulo alikuwa anasema ya kwamba mtu ndio awe mzee kwanza akuwe ameweza kufanya nini kuimarisha kwake so that you dominate you must come over the sin that so easily entangles so that you can dominate in your area praise be to god eh hey, i always tell my wife kuna kuna vitu sasa hii siwezi taka kufanya abu sasa hii uitwe ukaongelelee watu about afano about investment it until god delivers you from some things so that you talk about investment what can you tell people about investment if you have no, not invested some things don't require theory right and that is why we are saying total deliverance for full dominion total deliverance for full dominion dio sadire tukikuwa na kamati ya kuogelelea ku expand parking ukiwa pale unaweza toa point uwezi toa point kwa ile meeting kama hujakobolewa am i right hauna confidence atuamke useme upige point kwanza kupiga mtu ametoa point mzuri na wewe uko na maoni tofauti abua ni ni mshamani ya wado menake yeah you know we are talking about full dominion it requires total deliverance so that you can dominate in all areas and i'm not preaching because i'm there i'm preaching because of aspiration we aspire that as a church as a congregation there will be total deliverance for total dominion so that you can present yourself with confidence bwana asifiwe so that is the parasitic sin god to help us overtake and 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 let me say this before even i leave that point in job give us job 11:13 let me show you something here so that you don't think i'm talking from their stories this is job 11:13 the word says yet if you devote your heart to him and stretch out your heart to him verse 14 14 If you put away the sin that is in your heart and allow no evil to dwell in your tent 15 then free of fault you will lift up your face you will stand firm and without fear look at that the bible says if you get rid of that sin you will have confidence another version says you will have confidence to stand before god But if you carry around some sins you will never face up. Wanasifiwe. You will never have the confidence to face even your God. And the next deliverance that we want and this one I want an amen is barrenness. That God will deliver us from barrenness. And there are so many forms of barrenness that the lord is speaking to us this day that he is willing to deliver us if we so will or if, if we so pray number one, the form of barrenness that god is willing to deliver us number one is fruitless effort fruitless effort look 54 to 5 peter says that we have labored the whole night but we caught nothing these people had labored walikuwa wametokezea mtaa they had done what was required to be done walikuwa wametayarisha nyavu zao walikuwa wameelekea hata majini they had been there for a whole night but they declare and they confess we caught nothing may the lord deliver us from fruitless effort someone sweating and sweating but going home with nothing 
May the Lord deliver us from that kind of barrenness whereby you say, Sio kazi sifani, sio kutafuta sitafuti. But every time I work, I go home with nothing. May the Lord deliver us. You know, this is Jesus. Jesus tells him, try again now. He is able to command fish even at a time that is not for fishing. You don't get it during the peak time. See, that's my queer peak hours. You can even fish in the morning. You can even fish where there is no money, no fish. But he will command fish into your net. When there is deliverance from barrenness. The second form of barrenness is number two, being seedless. May the Lord deliver us from a state of being seedless. Seedless can be capital. Maybe you have nothing to plant. You have nothing to start over. You have nothing to put into the soil. You have no seed. You are seedless. Like in Genesis 11.30, the Bible says that Sarah was barren. She could not give birth. There was no seed in her womb. The other form of barrenness, I want to carry through this. Another form of barrenness that we need to ask for deliverance is something we call miscarriage. Losses and abortions. May the Lord deliver us from miscarriage. May the Lord deliver us from losses. May the Lord deliver us from abortions. Anytime you start something, anytime you want to start something, you don't know how, but there is miscarriage. Praise be to God. You know, the reason I'm bringing this is because we will not be able to dominate. When I see few, when I end up to go again, when I go, I'm going to be a shagana. Be a shagana, be a you cannot dominate. You, you cannot be able to dominate if there is abortions, if there is miscarriages in your life. But may the Lord flourish whatever we begin. May the Lord give life to that small thing you start. I Praise be to God. It is possible with God. And the other one, the other form of barrenness that we need deliverance is this one that we say, environmental conditions that do not allow fruitfulness. Conditions, let me just call them conditions that do not allow fruitfulness. Kuna conditions about to nataka deliverance. Dryness. So, acidity. Kuna yani kuna ma condition abazo haziru husu kuna wiri kwa mambo ambayo tunayafanya. May the Lord deliver us. Oh. I want to say this also we need deliverance. I'm moving fast but I know you are catching what is important. The Lord to deliver us from as a church. This one I will say as a church, as families, as business people, uh, 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 anyone of us. May the Lord deliver us from disunity. May the Lord deliver us from disunity. I can do it on myself. I don't need anyone else. I can do this alone. May the Lord give us unity. And I will say this. There is power in unity. Do you want to see there is power in unity? In Genesis 11, 1 to 6. Give us that, Genesis 1, 11. Sorry, Genesis 11, 1 to 6. Look at this. Read with me. Now, the whole world had one language and a common speech. Verse 2 says, As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. Verse 3 they said to each other, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar, verse 4. 
Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name of ourselves. Otherwise, we'll be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Verse 5, but the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. Uh -huh. Verse 6, and now this is my point. The Lord said, look at this. If as a one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this. Then, nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. This is God. You know, these people are doing something that is moving God. And akuja hapo, wanataka kujega mnara, wajijege jina. I'm not, I'm not so worried about that for now. But this is what God confesses by his own words. Anasema hivi, tazama watu hawa ni taifa moja, na lugha yao ni moja, na haya dio wanayo anza kuyafanya. Wala sasa, hawata zuiriwa neno wanalo kusudia kurifanya. If people are united, they speak one language, they have a common goal. They are united in physically and even spiritually. There is nothing they so desire to do that will be impossible. That says the Lord. And the only way for God to stop them was to bring disunity, confusion. Buona sifiwe. There is power in unity. And I want you, when you go home, you read a uh, Is it first or second Corinthians 12? About the body has many parts. Is it in first or second? Chapter number 12. Corinthians 12. I, I want you to take time and read it. And you see that the body is of many parts. And there is no part. Hakuna part in our eyes that dominate. Without the body. You cannot dominate without the body. Hakuna, there is no part. That is one thing we need to be delivered. You cannot dominate alone. Awezi, you are part of a body. You cannot dominate alone. Na ukitaa kujua, sade usikuja church, wabia mugu kuje. Eh, unaza tuma mugu wako. I'm a heart. Si heart diyo mugu wa naitaji. Si diyo? Unairetaka kwa nini suwa. Sade uwabie heart edda. It has to come with the body. Praise be to God. There is no way a part can, can dominate alone. And I was giving an example. Even in football. <laughs> Elder, which part of the body needs to dominate? Sini migu, na mikono inaiperekaga kwa nini. And in fact, mikono kwa futibo ni shida. But for the food to dominate, the hearts have to come along. Bwana sifiwe. For you to dominate, the body must be there. And an idea add, hii ni naogezea. For the part of a body to dominate, the body has to be there and the body has to be healthy. You need the church. You need the body of Christ. For you to dominate, you will not dominate alone. That one is an imadiko. You cannot dominate without the body. Praise be to God. And I want to say this also to the body. The body will not dominate if all the parts are not there. So even the church needs you. You have your place in the church. You have your place in the church. Wow. Let me end with the last one here and say that we pray God we are delivered from complaint and grabbering. Complain and grabbering it's a sin. And it's also so as a result of spiritual amnesia. 
complain, kira kitu, you are complaining. <laughs> Everything you complain, even in your family, in the church, kwa kazi, hakuna kitu, unaonaga positively. May the Lord deliver us. And this is what really affected the children of Israel in the desert. The problem of grabbing. And, and you know, before hiyo nyama, they were dying because of hunger. Wanaikura siku kadhaa wanasema, "Hai." Oh, walikuwa wamekura mana, si ndio? It is mana wamekura sana wakasema we need beef. You complain over everything. May the Lord help us. We don't have the interest of time, or oh, sorry, the sufficiency of time, but I will also say, may the Lord deliver us from complacency. Oh, may the Lord deliver you and me from complacency. Hali ya We feel we can do it on our, it is united in Aeza Torewa Tupare Kwa Unity, lakini complacency is a feeling of self-satisfaction, especially when accompanied by an awareness of actual dangers or deficiencies. And the best example is Samson. Samson and Abu, hey, 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 wafiristu wa mekuja. And I say, mahai, nitaamuka kama kawaida. I shake myself. And I kill everyone. Kwani wafiristi ni kitugani. You know, complacency is whereby you fear God is suppress. <laughs> Naza kufiri, hii kitu nimeifanya miaka 15. Why do I need to go for prayers overnight? I have been doing it over and over again. Arafu, <laughs> ni hile reverend anatuambia unaguza hapa, unasikia 200,000 and budgeted. 200,000 and budgeted. Na njimu unasaya masujitu kaobe shidagani kanisani. I have what it takes to ensure myself, why do I need God? That is a problem. And many times, we approach things. Kiki umana diyo, tunasema nini? Mungu wa igirie? Eh, mungu igirie kati. Why didn't he start? Why should he join halfway through the battle? I, I will call the church. Let us totally surrender to Jesus for total deliverance, leaving nothing behind. Even the hoof counts. Our total life belongs to Jesus. Every part of us belongs to him. May God give us total deliverance. Let us examine our hearts. And I will call us to start. Let us examine our hearts, our thoughts, our minds, Kama vile Daudi anasema chunguza moyo wangu. Uone ni nini hiyo that you need deliverance from speaking to the Lord. And I know that he's so gracious to fulfill his promise of deliverance and we twist beloved children. May the Lord bless you.